Okay. Right. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about um, how we discipline our kids. Um, I haven't done this talk for quite a while now, actually. I've been doing it for probably part three, four months. I took a month off. Um, but I thought today I'll do um, quickly um, how we discipline um, our kids. And the reason why it came to mind actually is because um, of uh, stuff that I think the city, city TV, city FM, sorry, are doing um, regards tackling uh, and discipline the country there going around um, stopping people that are violating um, driving driving regulations and all that kind of stuff. And um, what happened was that I was in the car with my kids again going to school and there was a news item about, I think it was an MP or something that got, got stopped. And the MP was having an argument with um, the policeman as to why he'd been stopped for a quite a dangerous uh, traffic violation. <laughs> and uh, my uh, daughter was actually quite bemused um, at the, uh, the radio uh, radio interview and was asking, uh, isn't, isn't that man who's been stopped uh, an MP who, who create, creates the law? And I say, yeah, yeah, it's an MP that creates the law. Then she said, um, well, if it's an MP that's creating the law, surely he knows that the law that he's creating is supposed to be uh, enforced. So if the law is being enforced, then he really he should be happy that the laws that he's creating are actually being enforced, even though he's the one that's been caught actually violating the law. So I said, well, yeah, true. Um, it's a bit sad that the man the man who's created the law is the one who's actually violating the law um but maybe it's because he hasn't actually thought through the fact that when he creates a law the law has been forced and when the law does get enforced the law um will be enforced regardless of whoever the person violating the law is whether it's an mp or or the common floor member um, Lowest denominator or citizen. If you're caught driving, um, violating the driving laws, you you will you will get um, disciplined by the law. So they sort of got me thinking that ah well yeah, that's true. Uh, if 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 a, a child at that level can actually think through this, then um, what happened to the MP for him to all of a sudden think that he could uh, violate? Um, violate the law so um, I just thought I'd do something quickly on on um, discipline for, for our kids so usually when when we speak about um, discipline and before I start actually um, like I said I said with all my other videos I'm not a, um, a trained psychologist or anything like that just a parent I'm just sharing um, stuff that I do with my own family my wife and stuff that I've picked up things that I've gone and researched myself. So yeah, and go out there and then do your own research, ask around as well. This is just my own views on, on disciplining kids. So usually when we think about disciplining kids, uh, what we think is this, you know, something that occurs in a, in a, in a negative uh, environment, negative uh, circumstance. So let's say the child steals, it's a negative circumstance. The parent finds out. The parent disciplines the child. And typically, when it comes to uh, the um, African style, the Ghanaian style of discipline, means that you're going to get a, a cane to your backside. I know of late nowadays, uh, the modern parents don't don't do a lot of that. But when I was growing up, if you um, did something bad, you would get a cane <laughs> to your to your backside. If you're unfortunate. Uh, this is some of the aunties that I I, I knew. You probably get a frying pan as well, <laughs> as well to your to your to your to your some part of your body. So um, we usually look at discipline then as something that occurs in a negative environment, and it usually occurs um, 
reactively um, after after the um, negative thing has, has happened. Um, and usually when we do that, they were just trying to train the child uh, to actually stop what they're doing. Okay, and that's that's the current kind of thinking um, around discipline. You know, the child does something naughty, stop the child from doing the naughty thing in that moment at that particular time that you find out. So you're using punishment essentially to try and correct um, some level of uh, disobedience in the child. Um, and you're trying to just train the child to sort of obey uh, the rules, whether it's the rules of the house or uh, the rules if the child is within a school setting um, or whatever. So there's a code of, code of ethics, code of practice. You're trying to get the child to stay within those um, confines. Now, the other part of discipline, though, is actually training the child so that the child actually has a level of self-control. So that they do things in a controlled uh, and habitual uh, way. So this, this then looks not to come in and react after the child has done something wrong, but to actually try and train the child to be able to not do uh, something wrong. Now, the thing, though, is that for all of us adults who uh, are working, um, who understand uh, constitutional law and understand what it means to be citizens of a particular country, we all work within some sort of confine, some sort of framework. Um, so if you're working in an office, you'd have your HR law, um, HR policy that would, you know, sort of give you the framework within which you're supposed to behave in a particular way. If you're part of some sort of professional body, let's say chartered accountant body or institute of banking or institute of engineers or whatever, and you have a professional code of ethics that again gives you the framework and the confines within which um, you behave. So that is your disciplinary framework. Um, if you're a citizen of a country, you have the laws and regulations, the constitution, etc. That again frames uh, how you're supposed to behave. If you're in some sort of religion, Christianity, the Bible, um, Muslim, the Quran, etc. So that's all frames again um, the way you're supposed to behave. So discipline usually occurs within some sort of uh, framework, some sort of binary, some sort of confine. So now the first thing for us parents to realize is that we need to create that framework within which we then discipline uh, the children. Now what I mean by that is if, for example, you're the kind of person who in your house are pretty lax about things, you know, you allow things just to go on um, as, 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 as you know, the individuals wish. You're creating a kind of framework or um, ecosystem where um, things are fairly free and chaotic. You, know? you can do what you want, when you want, how you want. When it then comes to disciplining the child, the child has already been pre-programmed that within that framework, he or she can do what they want, when they want, how they want. So when you then bring the child and start to want to try and discipline the child, the child then wants to try and start questioning uh, why you're disciplining them. Because you've given them the understanding already that within that framework, that within that ecosystem, they can do what they want. So if, for example, you don't really enforce, let's say, sleeping time, so the child sleeps during the week um, anytime they wish you know there's no really set time to say right by 7 30 you need to be asleep or by eight o'clock you need to be asleep the child monday sleeps at six tuesday sleeps at 9 p.m uh, wednesday sleeps at 11 p.m because um, the child will sleep when you go and sleep that kind of thing then there isn't really that kind of framework within which the child knows when they have to go to sleep so that if the child then decides to stay up till um, 11 p.m. on a particular day, and you, the parent, get upset, you already created that framework which tells the child that I can sleep at any time that I want to sleep during the week, or I, I go to sleep when mommy and daddy go to sleep. So if that's 6 p.m., great. If that's 11 p.m., great. So you then cannot then say, why aren't you asleep at, uh, let's say, 7 p.m. or 8 p.m.? The child will have every right to question um, what you're what you're saying, the discipline that you're trying to put down, because you've created that framework, that ecosystem, 
which allows the child to do what they want and sleep at whatever time they want. So the first thing for us parents to uh, kind of realize is that we need to create the correct uh, ecosystem and create the correct boundaries you know, within which we can then discipline uh, discipline the child. Um, so yeah, so that's the first that's the first thing. So typically, typically when we're creating these kind of um, boundaries, we're trying to let the child realize that the rules and regulations in the in the house. Now, some some parents will have um, rules posted up on, let's say, on the refrigerator, or they go and buy um, house rules from a shop, for example. So some people have house rules that they buy from the from the store. You know, which which you say if you drop it, pick it up. Um, if 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 you um, um, use it, put it back where you took it from. You know, little little house rules, and it sort of frames. Um, how the child should behave within within the the, the 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 house, okay. So it's important that parents we do that we 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 create the right ecosystem and set down the parameters within which we're going to discipline our, um, our kids our kids um, too. Um, so for example, with with with, with, with us by seven thirty, you should be in bed. You wake up in the morning. They don't come and say good morning to mommy or daddy without first uh, dressing your bed, you know, going to brush your teeth. Then you come and say good morning to us. Uh, when you come back from school, put your bags at a certain place, put your shoes at a certain place, go and wash your hands, do your homework, eat, etc. So you start to create certain frameworks and habits and rules and within which you then discipline. So then, if then do something outside that you then have the opportunity to say all oh, them and say you've not done this it's wrong whereas if you let them do what they want and it's like a free for all um, ecosystem it's a lot more difficult than to try and discipline the child okay so um that speaks then to creating a framework so the next thing then is once you created the framework then what's the kind of style of discipline that you as the parent um Will, uh, will employ in, in, in teaching the um, child um, habits and then also in correcting the child if the child does something um, wrong. And I've said that the discipline is two ways. It's teaching the child the habits and it's the self-control and then correcting the child if the child then you know, um, steps out of that ability to control and regulate themselves and, and does something uh, wrong. Um, and for me, it's really three three ways. You can either be deliberate about the way you discipline the kids, uh, or you can be reactionary, or deliberate and reactionary, or you can just be sort of blasé about it, you know, so there's no consistency. One moment you discipline, the next moment you, you sort of let it, let it go. You know, there's no consistency. With the kids, you need um, consistency. Yeah, if you start being blasé about, about things, you start to send the kids uh, mixed signals about how they should behave and how they should regulate um, themselves. So consistency uh, when it comes to discipline uh, is very important. Um, yeah, sometimes with my kids, I'll let them uh, negotiate and give them an opportunity to try and negotiate just, just for them to see that, yeah, sometimes you need to push um, uh, the boundaries and, 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 and see whether you can get your own way back. There is still a framework, and um, for the kids, it's important that they work within within that um, framework. Right. So when we talk about um, being uh, reactionary, then for example, reactionary is when we look at things like um, corrective and uh, correcting. Okay. So those are the two type of reactionary ways that, that we can discipline our kids. Um, correcting where. You just want to eliminate that bad behavior as and when it's happening. Okay, so the person does something, lies, um, you tell them straight away, why are you lying? Stop lying. Uh, maybe you, you cane them, you send them to their room, or whatever type of discipline format you have. And then there's a corrective um, action where you then start to actually look at the root cause of why the kid is uh, lying. So maybe the child has now gotten some sort of habit where they keep persistently doing things so you now need to go beyond just correcting it and watching it happen again and then correcting it and watching it happen again 
to actually dig in down to try and figure out what the actual root cause um, of the indiscipline is. So you can actually start applying um, corrective actions rather than just correcting. So an example of that would be, let's say, if an adult and you're um, uh, caught uh, drink driving, let's say in the UK, for example, you're caught drink driving. Yeah, you'd be corrected. And the way you get corrected is that you may have, you know, some sort of criminal um, uh, conviction in the sense that you may have points on your license, uh, your license may be taken away. If it's drink driving which causes severe harm to someone else, you may get in prison for uh, some amount of time or you may get some sort of community sentence. But what will then happen is that they then look at the corrective action where they'll then say, right, the root cause of you actually doing this drink driving is the fact that you have uh, an issue with alcohol. So then they may then send you to um, a rehab center, they say Alcoholics Anonymous. They may then ask you to uh, redo your driving test or give you advanced driving uh, lessons in addition to the correcting that they correct you. So, you know, they go a step a step further um, to look at the actual root cause of, of why you are indisciplined um, in, in the way they, they apply the reactionary style of um, discipline. So um, as parents, we need to look at those two sides, not just the correcting, which automatically comes to us, but also the actual corrective um, actions, which requires you to actually engage the child more and um, actually try and reason with the child and understand why the child behaves the way they behave. So for example, the child may uh, be getting bullied at school. So when they come home, they may have um, you know, mood, mood tantrums and may speak rudely to you, the parent, um, because they don't know how to um, deal with the bullying uh, that they're being um, subjected to in school. So now, if you if you just use the correcting action, all you do is just probably scream at them and say, "Well, why are you being rude? You know, you shouldn't speak to mommy or daddy this way. Stop doing that. Don't do that again." And the child will nod and say, "Yeah, I won't do it." But you find out that the child will come probably the next day, next two days, and probably do the same thing again. But if you then probably sit the child down and try and reason with the child and try and understand what the root cause of their discipline is, you may then find out that, oh no, it's, it's because he or she is actually getting bullied in school. You know, so they're coming home with some level of emotional baggage. Or maybe he or she's going through some sort of um, teenage phase where you know, the hormones are raging, so they find it difficult to control themselves. You know? So, you know, when you then start to look at the actual, um, uh, hello, Nina, um, Hima. When you then start to look at the actual um, corrective action, it sort of uh, helps the child um, a lot more in understanding why they're being disciplined. It also creates more of a sort of bond between you, the parent, and the child, because you're now going to the root cause. You're not just inflicting pain <laughs> on the child and getting the child to just stop what they're doing at that point in time, which makes you feel good. But actually, it doesn't actually resolve the issue that's actually in the child. You know, it forms a greater bond. You know, you're bonding with the child. You're speaking. You're talking through issues. You know, you're letting the child critically think um, about why they're behaving the way they behave. Um, you're looking at the root cause. You're trying to resolve the root cause of the issues. You know, so that in itself um, teaches the child as well, because then the child then starts to appreciate the fact that you don't just look at the surface. Um, when things are happening, but there may be underlying um, issues behind the way um, people behave. You know, so they then start to approach things more as they grow with a bit more of uh, emotional uh, intelligence. So that's the um, that's a reactionary uh, part of disciplining um, the child. And I urge as all parents to sort of step away from the correcting and also add the corrective action. You know, so we can engage our, our kids more and do a bit more reasoning um, with the kids and a bit more communicating uh, with the kids. You know, When you just do the pure correcting, I mean, you're, you're basically treating the child like a typical animal, like, like, a, like a dog or a goat, you know, whip it and, 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 and get it in line. You know, we, we need to go beyond that. I think the kids nowadays as well are a lot more intelligent than we were. You know, they're subjected to a lot more information, a lot more knowledge um, at a, an earlier age than we were. Um, so I think they deserve um, to have a bit more intellectual um, 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 side to, to, to being to being disciplined. Um, 
you know, in some schools, I think in Ghana, they've actually, they've actually banned even caning. Uh, I don't agree with that because I think you need the correcting side to that, which caning is a part of, as well as the, the corrective side. Um, I don't know what they've replaced caning with now. Um, I think I think in, I think in the kids' school, I think it's lines or something like that. Uh, but yeah, as, as parents, let's let's try and balance the correcting with the um, with the corrective side of um, discipline. So the correcting eliminates the bad behavior at the point at which it happens, but the corrective side looks at the deeper uh, issues uh, and tries to eliminate the actual root cause of the um, um, indiscipline. It also gets the child to be more introspective um, and take a lot more control and charge of um, self-regulating. Okay. So what the child then does is that the child doesn't then focus on what they did wrong, but they rather start to focus on uh, the cause of, of of why they're doing things wrong and how they can actually um, correct correct that. And I think that's more powerful when it comes to disciplining the kids than purely um, just uh, you know correcting them. Um, I think as parents, when we just correct them, we're just so serving our own self-interest because we just want the child to just shut up, stop you know messing around, stop shouting, stop playing tantrums, you know, you distress a bit by inflicting a bit of pain, uh, pain by caning them, and then that's it, we're, we're, we're happy. Hey, Kunfi, how are you? Fifi Sam, yeah, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, so 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 that's what I've got to say about the uh, reactionary. Um, and also when we're, when we're doing the uh, disciplining, uh, the correcting, um, let's try and also step away from, you know, some of the kind of words that we used. I mean, I grew up with, um, and if this one, my parents, this was other people that I lived with, where you were getting a lot of um, derogatory words, you know, um, for those who don't understand guy, you're basically reinforcing the fact that the kid is an idiot, uh, the kid is a bad person, um, the kid um, uh, will grow up to be a fool, the kid will grow up to be a thief in the future, all that kind of stuff, you know. Let, let's try and step away from, from, from that, from that behavior. I think, I think, I think our ancestors who were doing that were trying to let the child um, see the impact of what they were, they were they were doing. So, if the child was stealing and you know they said certain things, they wanted the child to see the impact in the future of what you know that behavior would be if it continued as a habit. You know, but I think we've now sort of taken that and misunderstood what our ancestors were trying to do when it came to discipline, and we just go straight into the insults, and that becomes more derogatory. And it starts to have to break down the child's um, confidence, you know. So all the kind of, you know, the babunu and then, you know, the uh, basuba and stop it and you're stupid and you're clumsy and all that kind of stuff. You know, let's try and lay off, um, lay off those words. I mean, yes, they're clumsy, but you as a parent, what, what are you doing about it? It's not for you to tell them that they're clumsy. It's for you to actually show them how to not be clumsy. It's not for you to tell them um, that they're, they're a thief and that they'll grow up to be an armed robber. It's for you to show them um, that, you know, their behavior is not correct uh, and why they shouldn't behave in the way they behave and why this level of discipline is required so let's let's try and step away from the uh, derogatory um, words when when we discipline uh, our kids it doesn't it doesn't really it doesn't help um, at all um, it breaks down their um, their confidence okay um now the next thing um, as well then is is, is being deliberate uh, about the um, disciplining so i've just spoken about the reactionary part where you're basically doing it after the occurrence now the deliberate part is where you're actually trying to teach the kid um, you know habits you're trying to teach the kid um, to be able to self-regulate and control themselves so that they don't actually um, step outside um, the framework the boundaries that we set of what normal behavior is um, and so that when they do step outside, uh, they know and understand that they stepped outside. And when you do correct them, they know and understand why you're correcting them. So as parents, we also need to get very deliberate um, about the way we um, discipline um, our kids. Now, um, for most parents, we start off pretty well because, you know, we tell our kids to brush their teeth in the morning, brush their teeth in the evening, um, lay their bed when they get up, uh, make sure that when they're... They come back from school they put their bags in the right place to do their homework so we do all these little little things and when we're doing all these little, little things what we're actually doing is that we're trying to be deliberate about the discipline we're trying to get them to form um, certain um, habits you know be polite 
when you ask for something, say please. When you get it, say thank you. If you do something bad, say sorry. You know, all those things. We're trying to be deliberate um, about the disciplining uh, with our kids. And that's that's also f uh, highly important. I think we need to do a lot more of that as parents um, and do a lot more than just the brush your teeth in the morning and brush your teeth in the evening uh, kind of thing. Um, the being deliberate needs to go uh, beyond beyond just that. Um, and an analogy I can give with the deliberate is, 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 for example, in healthcare, where now in a lot of countries they have um, preventative healthcare. So they will tell you that the best way uh, to cure a sick person is by actually not falling sick in the first place. So, so they'll start looking at you know health, um, healthy habits, uh, eating five uh, foods a day, uh, exercising for 30, 35 minutes a day, um, you know, dealing with your stress, checking your vitals regularly, drinking lots of water, let's say, let's say eight glasses of water a day, you know, so, so it's more preventative, um, preventative kind of care. And that's been deliberate. Um, and then a post care would be when you're reacting, the reactionary, when you fall sick, then you get given some sort of treatment to cure the sickness. So what we want to do is to be also deliberate. So we're balancing the deliberate with the actual um, reactionary. If we do the deliberate, um, very well, then hopefully the level of reactionary um, intervention that we do becomes a lot a lot less. So you find that in societies, the societies where there's constant reactionary intervention is where there's been a, uh, break, a total breakdown of the um, deliberate uh, system of, of, of disciplining and, 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 and developing proper habits in kids. You know, so they grow up and as happens in Ghana, they'll be you have grown men peeing in the street and grow men, you know, dropping a uh, woman dropping such a water and, on, on, the, on the floor in the street and littering all over the place. And because you know, during the youth, if people have not been deliberate about about some of these um, habits and some of these um, um, behaviors, you know, so it's gotten now to the point where the framework within which they're working is now it's normal to drop litter, it's normal to pee in public, it's normal to you know, speak. Uh, with your voice raised and speak over people and you know, all that kind of stuff, you know, it's, it's not the norm. Um, but we need to, with our kids, you know, be very, very deliberate um, about certain things so that we start to phase out what is the norm um, in, in, in society. Um, so um, examples of how we can be um, deliberate then is, is sorry, is um, in being deliberate about getting our kids to have a level of self-control. Uh, we can do that, for example, by uh, denying our kids certain things. You know, I, I, I do that. My wife does that quite a bit. You know, I will intentionally de deny them things. You know, they say, oh, Dad, I want to watch a cartoon. No, for the hell of it, I'll say no. Not because the cartoon isn't showing or, or, or because I don't want them to watch the cartoon, but I just want them to get that feeling of I can't get what I want when I want it all the time, you know, and to actually feel that within themselves and to actually be able to control it and say, actually, you know what? Yeah, no, nah, I don't need to watch the cartoon. I can go and do something else, you know. Oh, dad, uh, can we can we have a pizza today? No, you're not gonna have a pizza. You're gonna eat the king king fish um, that's in the kitchen, you know. You know, you build you build you know that level of of, of self control where, where where they start to know that they. they they, they don't get or they won't get everything that they want all the time when they want it you know you're not spoiling the kids um yeah so self-control is, is one of the ways where you can build um, a level of deliberate and um, discipline um the other the other one is also uh, teaching them perseverance that's also another way in which you can build a level of um, um, discipline and with us we tend to do that with them um, um teaching them how to deal with, 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 with failure um, or teaching them how to um, follow things through um, to the end. And that's one thing I'm going to speak about in a bit more more, more detail. Um, another form in which you teach them discipline is, is, is teaching them to actually value um, what, they, what they do. So teaching them to actually check what they do. So, you know, when you're doing it, I've said it before in my previous um, engagements here on Facebook Live, that you do homework with them and you get them to check you know the homework um they do uh, something or like let's say they put on their school uniform get them to check you know 
you know, that their school uniform is tucked in properly, their shoes are put. I remember back in the day at this other college, we had that a lot, you know, you wouldn't get out of the um, dormitory um, without the seniors lining you, the juniors up in front of your bed, checking that your bed is um, laid properly, uh, you know, your, 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 sh your shoes are shining, they can see the reflection in your shoes, your socks are pulled up, you know, your belt is buckles in line with your flap, you know, your, your, your zip zips are up you know your shirt is ironed to a crisp you know so they check your trunk everything is neat all your clothes are folded you know there was a level of discipline that they, they they instilled you know where you actually check that what you do is is, is is actually good and that's a way in which we can actually um also help our kids that discipline of checking and um, so they don't do things by heart you know they don't they don't um, major in the level of mediocrity that a lot of um, our adults and politicians and you know leading uh, so-called uh, members of society are currently uh, doing uh, and creating that sort of framework where now everyone looks at them and thinks you know major in mediocrity is is, 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 the, is the end thing you know, let's let's teach our kids that discipline where you know, they value the quality of what they do you know and put the quality into what they do you know? so they don't, they don't step away from something unless they they see that yeah they're proud about what they've done and what they're doing is up to a certain standard or even more than the standard it takes a level of mental discipline uh, to actually uh, do this you know not just do things um, um, by heart yeah. other way in which then we can be deliberate about um, discipline um, is also letting them be aware you know creating a sense of um, heightened awareness um, at all times one of the mantras that with my kids we always say is um, that they should always be aware of their of their surroundings um, um, and not just in terms of physically you know seeing what's around them but also understanding emotionally uh, what's happening around them uh, and the kind of vibes that are they can pick up from people when they interact with people or, um, or whether amongst uh, a group of people and socializing etc and it, uh, again it takes a level of discipline to be able to do that you know to be able to trigger the emotional intelligence part of your brain and, 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 and connect properly um, sorry and connect properly um with, with 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 people so yeah so that awareness uh, and when they when they start to get that discipline of awareness they then start to be able to pick up on things that aren't correct you know so they wouldn't walk past um, let's say uh, a piece of paper lying on the floor crumpled up in the living room and not pick it up and put it in a dustbin or walk past uh, the kitchen and there's place in the sink and they'll just look at it and leave it because um, the, the help the maid would do it or you know mommy and daddy would do it you know so then that awareness then starts to then push on and actually um ignites initiative as well you know and all these things require a level of 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 deliberate um, discipline i think i think that's something that we're really missing um in ghana um to be brutally honest uh, if you look at the sort of nonsense and indiscipline that goes on there's not been a lot of, a lot of deliberate disciplining of, 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 of kids so you now got adults that just do things uh, do things willingly blase but how overlook things you know and don't check that what they've done is good um, you know don't care you have a politician even though they know they know they have to do a value for money orders they don't care they'll just go spend the money however they want to spend spend the money buy ambulances and not even check that the ambulances are fitted out properly and fit for purpose you know a whole lot of stuff and all this boils down to the issue of, of, of discipline of, of of not you know inculcating that deliberate discipline um, into our kids um, whether they're young um, yeah, I hope you can all hear me I've, I'm actually recovering from flu and I've got some sort of toothache at the moment so my, my, my speech is a bit um, labored I just thought I had to get this out because it just came to me as I was um, throughout the week um, chatting with my kids so I just thought I'd um, Get this Facebook live out before I forget, forget everything. So that's another example of um, deliberate um, discipline, and then also you know taking responsibility um, for the for their actions is also another form of deliberate uh, discipline, where you now start to get the children to actually look at the impact of what they're doing. You know, so they don't do things by heart, and if they do something and there's a there's an impact to it, they take responsibility for that impact. They don't start pointing and saying is that person's fault, is this person's fault, and that's what happens a lot as well. Coming back to the whole politics thing, you know. One party will come and they'll say, no, it was the other party who did it, and that's why this is happening. And other party will come and say, oh, no, it was the other party that did it. No one takes responsibility for anything that happens. You know, as if everything that's happening 
it's happening has that sort of magic vacuum um, and i think we need to as parents instill that level of uh, discipline in, in, in our parents sorry in our kids that they need to take responsibility for what what what, uh, what they do and um, for what happens um, around them responsibility for the way they behave for the way they talk for the way they um, uh, they act so that when we, when we discipline them all these things come to fall so usually when I discipline my kids and it becomes the corrective action. I go back to the deliberate part and I start to ask these questions. So what part of the awareness um, was the issue? What part of the initiative was the issue? What part of you taking responsibility for your action was the issue? What part of self-control was the issue? Uh, what part of you checking was the issue? You know, so you start to I think, look through the deliberate things that should um, have occurred for that child not to have done what they did and then start to try and drill down into the root cause of why they behave in the way um, they behave. So these are some of the examples of uh, uh, the deliberate forms of um, um, discipline. And the one that I really wanted to speak to was uh, following through, um, teaching our kids to actually look at following through what they're doing. Um, and it's a very simple thing that we can do with our kids. So for example, um, at the moment with our kids, that's what we're, we're, we're doing. If, if, if our child, for example, goes and, say, and tells us, okay, mommy, daddy, I'm hungry. Okay. For me, the moment you say you're hungry, it's not just a case of you satisfying your insatiable hunger. And then once you're satisfied, you leave it at that. You know, the process of you being hungry means that someone has to cook, means that someone has to make sure there's a clean plate and cutlery means that the food has to be dished means that you have to be at the table with the food on the mat means that you have to pray before you eat and thank uh, uh, god for your meal and thank your parents for, for the meal and appreciate the fact that you're able to have a meal it means that you need to enjoy the food and not throw tantrums about the fact that you wanted kfc and not king cake uh, it means that after you enjoy the food you don't just go and dump your plate in the sink and go sit back behind the TV and watch uh, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse uh, <laughs> on the TV. It means that you wash the plate. It means that you put the plate when you wash the back on the, on the drying rack. It means that the sink is clean. And then that whole process of you saying, I'm hungry, is complete, you know. So you, you, even though you say you're hungry, you're saying you're hungry by envisioning you know all the steps that you need to go through in order to deal with your hunger and not just deal with your hunger but deal with your hunger in the correct way so you don't just you know get the food eat the food leave the plate on the table um and then just go sit behind the tv and start watching cartoons or you know go outside and start playing you know when we start allowing our kids to do these things we're actually teaching them uh different type of habit we will teach them that they should just satisfy what they need at that point in time and not follow through to the end not appreciate uh, the fact that someone has actually um, um, worked to give them um, that satisfaction of of, 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 of of quenching their hunger you know and that the way they can they can give back to that person is by not just saying thank you but by washing the dishes and making sure the dishes are back in the right place and clearing the t the dining table and making sure that there's no uh, morsels of, of, of food lying around on the floor after they've eaten you know so um that that takes a level of 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 of, of, of discipline and we as parents need to instill those small small things into our kids otherwise they'll grow up and they'll be taking the decisions uh, on behalf of, of of people on behalf of of companies on behalf of of citizenry and not following through not even thinking through <clears throat> uh, to the end you know and there's a lot of that especially in, 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 in Ghana where people take decisions and they, they don't even think through to the end you know it's about the here and now how much they can get in their pocket how many votes they can win um, because the election is coming uh, close uh, how much influence they can get they don't think about the collateral damage they don't think about the impacts um, you know, they just, they just they just make the decision for the here and now, and that's it. You know? 
and it takes it takes a level of, of, of discipline to be able to follow through things uh, to the end and i think doing little things like that with our kids uh, actually starts to instill that that in their brain you know it starts to fire up that 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 um, part of the brain um, here you know the prefrontal cortex i've spoken about that in my previous um previous uh, facebook live engagements you know that gets them gets them to start critically thinking about their the way they, they they behave so we need to be we need to be really deliberate you know that that's just an example another example could be um you telling them okay go to bed and we've got school tomorrow in the morning the moment you say that it's not just go to bed as in i'm gonna go and sleep it involves a whole other things it involves you saying good night to your parents it involves you brushing your teeth it involves you taking a bath it involves you putting on a pair of clean pajamas it involves you making sure your bed is uh, tidy and you go in your bed. It may involve you praying before you sleep or reading a, a book for 15, 20 minutes before you sleep. Uh, then it involves you waking up. You know, then it involves you going through the process of brushing your teeth again, bathing again, getting your school uniform, packing your school bags, etc. So you telling them go to sleep, they're going to school tomorrow. Isn't just them thinking, oh okay, and then they go to the bedroom and they sleep. You know, they already start to follow through. You know, I start to think through to what's going to happen, the process that's going to happen for me to sleep, and what's going to happen when I wake up. You know, so then, now that you start to instill that level of discipline in terms of the way they think, they start to also then include um, planning. So then they won't just go and sleep if they haven't packed their school bags, or they won't just go and sleep if they haven't maybe done their homework or what you to sign review and sign their homework, or they won't just go and sleep if they haven't done. Um, other things that they need to do before they go and uh, sleep, you know, they will not sleep without them brush their teeth, you know, because you teach them to follow through, you know, you're teaching them to actually think about the processes that they need to follow in order to achieve something, you know. So they don't just think about the, the, the end, but they think about the, the little steps that they take towards the end, you know, and appreciate how those little steps link together to form that end game which is sleeping and then look past the sleeping and try and understand what needs to be done um, when they do sleep you know so then they won't sleep and when the alarm clock goes at 7 8 a.m they still want to sleep you know in their mind they've already got it in the in, 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 in the back of the mind that oh i have to wake up so the moment you're going to wake them up yeah they may kick and fuss but they know they have to wake up so they wake up and they get cracking and going you know so it's important that we um and teach our kids to uh, follow through. So those are two two simple uh, kind of examples that that, that um, I've given. Another one is, for example, let's say sachet water. Oh, mommy, daddy, I want to drink water. And you've got sachet water in there or um, a bottle of water. You know. Drinking water doesn't mean they go and just take the sachet water, bite it, spit the uh, plastic that they've, they've, they've bitten out on the floor, drink half the sachet water, and then leave the rest of it on the table and then rush off. No. Drinking a sachet of water means you're going to go get it from the fridge. You're going to get scissors and cut it nicely. That bit you cut is going in the bin because it may get recycled. You go get a glass, pour what you need to drink into the glass. If you can't finish it, the rest of the sachet water goes back in the fridge. When you're finished drinking from the glass, what did the glass do? It goes in the sink. Oh, by just the stay in the sink, it gets washed and it gets put back. So you're, think, you're, you're helping them again to follow through. So that they don't do things where they satisfy what they want at that point in time, which is their thirst, and then everything else gets left. You know, sachet water is half drank on the table. The bit that they they, they they cut to be able to drink the water is on the floor. The scissors are lying somewhere else, you know, and they're enjoying themselves again because they've satisfied their, their immediate uh, thirst. You know, it's not just the thirst that you need to satisfy. It goes beyond that. You know, so then you then start to teach them the discipline of doing things in the in, in, in the right in the right uh, right way. So by following through the whole process and, and, and being disciplined the way you think about that whole thing and getting them to actually do that and do that and do that, you're actually creating all these mind maps and connections in their brains, which then become so natural that anytime they do something, they want to follow through. You know, they won't just stop at a point and forget about uh, everything else that needs to be done or the consequences of what they've done or how people are reacting to what they're doing. You know, they, 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 they think past just themselves you know, they're aware of, of, of other things and um, that, that are happening around them because of the way they're behaving 
so yeah so following through let's 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 take that let's take that very very um very very seriously it's something i'm doing uh, with my kids at the moment uh, this whole thing of of of, of following through um, and sometimes i pull them aside and just have a chat through the process yeah it's boring but we'll have a chat through the process and let them actually understand that you know for you, you may have just been a step but actually these are all the little little things that you did you know in order to achieve what you achieved at the end you know and it helps it, it really it really it really helps and it, it creates i believe uh, connections in their minds that uh, will help them when they when they um, they grow up to be able to actually be disciplined enough to do things and follow through and think about the consequences and understanding that what they're doing is good and checking it and making sure it's of the best quality to their ability um, etc so yeah and then it also creates the mental picture it helps them to um, start practicing the thing of envisioning you know seeing seeing ahead and that is in itself is a, it's a discipline the, the, the quicker we let them capture that when they're younger the better they will be when they grow up you know we'll start to to see ahead you know and be visionaries like uh Nkrumah was not another another um great people and uh, leaders of the of the past and, and and currently okay so yeah i think i've spoken for 47 minutes uh, and that's what i wanted to say so just just to recap then uh when we speak about discipline then we need to not just think about um just uh, correcting the behavior at the point in which the child has done something wrong but actually looking at the corrective part and also reasoning with the child and going to the root cause of the um, issue uh, we need to set the framework within which the child gets disciplined so they know that there are rules and boundaries sometimes we allow them to push the frontiers of those of those boundaries but we need to help them do that in a healthy uh, and controlled uh, way we need to then also be very deliberate as well as reactionary uh, with the way we discipline the child and we need to focus very heavily on the on the deliberate and when we do the reactionary we need to focus very heavily on the corrective part not the correcting but the corrective part the part which actually engages their brain to actually reason about why they're behaving the way um, they're behaving and why um, it impacts people in the way um, is impacting so with me for example when i get upset about the way they behave i will explain to them why i'm upset so they understand that you know their behaviors um, actually also causes someone else's emotions to also go out of tune you know so they understand why why um, daddy and mommy is upset you know? sometimes the kids will not will not get it you know? so if we need um as parents also break that down to them you know and help them to also understand and why we, we we also get um, get upset you know and then it helps them to also appreciate why they need to be disciplined and and, and, and develop sound habits and uh, and and behaviors um, okay yeah so um let's let's take let's take discipline um, um, seriously um, as parents so that we we get we get kids that grow up who can um, self-regulate and, uh, who have a a level of self-control who can think critically past themselves and, 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 and you know and realize that you know life is not just a silo we don't live in a silo we, we are we're we a group of interconnecting uh, individuals and, and, and societies um, yeah and uh, i think i think i think the world the, the the country would be in a better a better a better place um, it all depends on us parents the country the way it is because as parents we're, we're really messing up we're not taking time to nurture um, our kids we're allowing them to be natured rather than be nurtured and i've spoken about that as well in my previous um, facebook live and posts so thanks for um, joining me for the past uh, 50 minutes i hope i made sense and i hope um, my voice was clear enough to be understood uh, like i said i'm recovering for a bit of flu and a bit of severe tooth too thick but i needed to get this um get this out because it's been on my mind for the past uh week um do all have a lovely weekend and um go out there and let's parent the next uh set of uh incrumers and um, other visionary leaders and, and, and change makers in, in society god bless you all thank you and good night